Hi, my name is Randall Allen Loy, and I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist in Orlando, Florida. I want to thank you once again for joining me today. Thanks for subscribing. So today we're going to be talking about so-called PGD, pre-implantation genetic diagnostic testing. Now that's a little bit of a misnomer because embryos don't have diseases, they just have genetic predispositions for diseases. So it is possible now to look at a myriad of diseases, both those that are so-called monogenic, and I'm going to explain that, and those that have single gene problems. So we're going to be talking about those that are single gene defects as well as chromosomal problems. I'm going to be talking about those in just a few minutes. But an interesting historical side note is that the first blastocyst was biopsied back in 1967 by Nobel Prize winner Robert G. Edwards and his colleague Richard Gardner. And what they did is they biopsied an embryo from a rabbit blastocyst. A blastocyst is a multicellular embryo and they were able to actually tell the sex of that rabbit back in 1967. Fast forward to 2013 and things have changed a whole lot. Now we're able to look at all 24 chromosomes, the 22 so-called autosomes, and the X and Y chromosomes. And those are the ones that determine uh, maleness or femaleness. So 46XX, normal female, 46XY, normal male. We are now using PGD, and let me just take you through that a little bit. We can biopsy an embryo at the eight cell stage when it's three days along in embryonic development in the Petri dish, or the five day stage. At the five day, it's likely to look something like this, hopefully a little bit better, but we want it to have about 100 to 200 cells. Now, oftentimes what we'll do on day four to get it ready for the biopsy, we will take a laser or a special solution and we will do so-called hatching, assisted hatching. So as you can see here, we made a little nick in the membrane. This is the so-called zona pellucida, the, the clear glassy shell surrounding the embryo. In fact, that glassy shell has been there around the egg as well, and the embryo develops in that egg shell. So we've, we've made this little nick so that on day five, we can come in here and take out some of these cells, typically about six or seven cells. We send these cells to a reference lab in Detroit, Michigan, and then we get the word back. So they go by FedEx, and they come back to us with a diagnosis or a profile, if you will, and so we can determine if this is a genetically normal embryo or not. So what sorts of diseases can this inform us about? Well, so-called monogenic disorders, and those are autosomal recessive. That's where the mom and dad are not affected by the disease, but they can both be carriers. And one in four of their children would have the disease itself. Something like sickle cell disease, or cystic fibrosis, or beta thalassemia. The second type of disease process is so-called autosomal recessive. If either of the parents is affected, then their children have a 50% chance of having that disease. Huntington's disease or Charcot-Marie Tooth are famous examples of that. Finally, there could be so-called X-linked diseases where the mother could be the carrier and male offspring could be affected. The classic one, of course, is hemophilia or Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, very known through the Jerry Lewis telethon. So, these are the sorts of things that we can pick up from there. Now, what if a patient is older where her eggs may not be as good or let's say she's gone through multiple IVF cycles that have been unsuccessful or she has unexplained recurrent miscarriage, this is a very nice test because we can profile this embryo. Is it genetically normal or not? We're able to put back the genetically normal ones. Some very nice studies out of New Jersey and Colorado recently have shown that profiling this embryo, also called PGS or pre-implantation genetic screening, is able to show us which embryos are normal and if we have that question answered, we're able to put back the good ones even into older moms so that somebody 46, 47, 48 has a chance to conceive. Pre-implantation genetic diagnostic testing and screening has opened whole new vistas of care in our field. It's very exciting, it's cutting edge. Let me tell you a story. A few weeks ago, a couple of professors at a local university found us on the internet and came in for PGD. And they came in, true story, the, the wife says, we want a son. And I thought, well, that's doable. And the husband said, we want him to have blue eyes. And the wife said, we want him to be 6'1 to 6'4. And the husband said, we like 1,500 to 1,600 on the SATs. And I thought, the script must have been written by Algis Huxley. This is crazy. 
And so I said, wait, 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 wait. There are limitations to what we can do technologically. There are certainly limitations to what we should do ethically. So I said, no, if, if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, I think you should just take your chances in IVF, maybe get a normal child just like you two. They didn't like that comment. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching this week. Great to see you. Thanks for subscribing. If you have questions, please write them, and I'm going to incorporate those. If they're of a personal nature, please write me at the address below, and I will incorporate those questions and suggestions into future episodes. Thanks so much. Subscribe.